Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Jackson Root. I'm the Content and Creative Marketing Manager here at D10. And I'll be hosting today's webinar and I'll be running today's slide presentation deck. So uh, we're running on the webinar platforms today. So what we've done is we've uh, disabled the chat function. So please, if you have any questions you want to add to the conversation, please use the Q&A function. Some of our Q&A questions we'll get to as we go and others we'll address um, over time. And we'll address many of them at the end of the webinar as well. Thank you, Pablo, for letting me know that the music is still on. Um, yeah, so, so as I was mentioning a minute ago, today's webinar is the future of team collaboration. Um, we're talking all about collaboration. We're talking about why it's important for engagement and inclusion in, in tomorrow's workplace, in today's workplace for many of us that are starting to go back. So um, with me today, our panelists are Nia Celestin, our head of marketing at D10, Mark Berrigan, North America Zoom Rooms Manager from Zoom, and Scott Krickerberg, our head of strategic alliances at D10. And again, I just want to reiterate, as we go through this presentation, please direct um, any of your questions to the Q&A function, um, you know, and we'll address them uh, both live, and we'll address them at the end as well. So with that, I'm going to hand the presentation to Nia Celestin, our head of marketing at D10, and she's going to walk us through some of the things that we're seeing in, in today's workplace and things that we should consider as we explore options to return. Thanks, Jackson. Good morning, everyone. We're really excited to be with you today to really dig in and talk about the challenges we're facing in terms of engaging teams in this new environment. We've all spent this last year, whether you are managing teams or a member of a team working together in our virtual solutions, we've all been Zooming for, for quite some time now. But that dynamic is really going to change as some of us return to the office, some of us are going to remain remote permanently and others are gonna kind of be coming in and out of the office a day or two a week. And that reality poses a challenge about how we go about um, maintaining our team's uh, success and productivity and engagement. So we're going to explore you know, some of the powerful tools that D10 and Zoom have to offer you that really are designed for the hybrid work environment, designed to keep your teams, uh, you know, happy, healthy, and functioning. Uh, and then finally, we'll look at solutions, not just for the office, but also for those remote workers and how they can be uh, engaged and feel connected to the team they belong to. When we think about sort of, you know, work job satisfaction, um, I think if we said, hey, everybody, you know, let's create a list together of what those elements would be. I think we all would think that some of these, um, you know, would be on everyone's list, right? Respect, praise, appreciation, that matters to all of us. Fair compensation, motivation, life work balance, they're all sort of part of the mix of, of what uh, job satisfaction looks like. But very interestingly, the number one component of job satisfaction is engagement. And engagement is defined by Gallup, for example, as engaged employees are those who are involved in, enthusiastic about, and committed to their work and their workplace. And as we you know, talk today about what we're doing to prepare the workforce to go back into the office, you know, one of the elements as well that we, we wanna hit on today, which is let's make it exciting. Workers wanna know that they're gonna go back to a workplace where it's gonna be exciting to use the latest and greatest tools uh, and be able to, like Mia says, engage, right? And make sure that we work together efficiently. So as we all kind of adopted the Zoom platform during the pandemic, we're going to want to bring that back into the office, but as we're, we now have this hybrid workforce together um, with the home office user, right, and the in-office user, we need to create this environment where they're able to seamlessly collaborate still, and this is what we're going to go over today. So. Yeah, thanks, Mark. I don't think we can overstate that. 
I really don't. Um, I, you know, one of the things we are certainly hearing from our customers, I'm sure you're hearing from your customers too, are what do we need? How are we going to build the bridge between the life we've been living for the past year and the new reality that we're going back uh, to work for? And, uh, you know, D10 and Zoom have spent this time really thinking about that question for our customers um, and enhancing our technologies for those customers so that we can provide them with the technology that can create that bridge. Absolutely. And that's exactly what we've been working on for the past year. We've had this, this chance to be able to add a lot of feature and functionality into the Zoom Room platform. And uh, that's what, you know, we'll cover more of that today. But these are the features and these are, this is the workflow, if you will, that we've had time to work on. And we think we've nailed it. So um, a lot more to come there as well. And we're going to continue to develop on making sure the cat is now out of the bag, right? The home users have proven to be effective during the pandemic. Um, but we know that it's imminent return to the office that we're going to get to, and that will create the, the hybrid uh, workforce moving forward. All right. Uh, you know, we've been talking about um, uh, collectively, right, about the going back and what it's going to look like and what it's going to feel like. And there's a lot of anxiety for a lot of people who are making these really dramatic shifts in uh, how they're going to work moving forward. And so the idea that some of our teams are in the office and some of our teams are remote um, really creates a new team dynamic. And when we look at what that looks like and feels like for uh, members of a team, we know that engaged workers have, have uh, a couple of key benefits. They benefit the company in that companies are more profitable with engaged workers. We know it enhances the workers' experience too, right? It improves their satisfaction with going to work. It makes them happy where they are and want to stay there. But when we talk about engagement, we have to think about what does that mean? You know, how would we operationalize that term and make it real for us? And the definition that keeps uh, coming up over and over again is that when people are engaged, they're experiencing open communication, the ability to connect with their team members, their work friends, right, their office mates, um, simply, easily, uh, and similarly in a way that they um, would be doing inside their office spaces, right? We're stopping by our desks, we're chatting with one another, those sorts of things. But also easy collaboration, that sense of being able to connect with your team members, brainstorm out ideas, uh, toss ideas around with one another, share things and share content uh, and share process and programs with one another easily and simply. And finally, finally, it's really all about meaningful connections. How do we create, create environments where people feel included? They feel a part of their teams. They feel like they're valuable members of the teams because they've been given opportunities to participate, opportunities to get involved. And this reality about engagement um, um, is really critical and it's, it's even more important right now than it has ever been. And on that note, Nia, just what we wanna focus on today as well is we're trying to make these tools seamless, meaning users just use them without having to figure it out. It's part of the kind of the process. And that's, that's one of the key things that you'll see with um, what we've developed over the past year is how do I walk into a room or a space? Um, how do I collaborate easily without having to think about it, right? I can just open up my laptop. I have on there the Zoom client. It automatically knows my environment and I'm able to take advantage of the D10 devices. This is, this is something that's key moving forward because we don't want our workforce to have a steep learning curve as we go back to the office. We want it to just flow nice and easy and seamless. And, uh, and I think we've accomplished that. And so what is created is what's called the engagement challenge. And the challenge is that even before the pandemic, by these definitions, only about a third of the workforce could be classified as engaged. 
So this isn't a new challenge for managers and team members. Um, it's an ongoing challenge, but now it's made sort of, um, uh, it requires more focus, more attention on meeting this challenge. And D10 and Zoom are really here and our, uh, you know, our companies are both committed to creating the opportunities to increase the level of engagement of your teams, increase your engagement with your existing teams, or even with your new teams that you've built during, uh, during the pandemic. So let's talk about what that looks like. So we know that we should be, right, um, uh, building engaged teams. We know we want to be engaged team members, but what is that really gonna look like as we head back to the office? And what do we need to make it happen when we do go back? And one of the first items really is about figuring out how do you maintain your team culture in this new environment? And that becomes really important. If you've spent uh, you know, time building effective teams, you're part of an effective team, you want that to continue even as we go back to work and we face the challenge of the hybrid office. Next up is you have to start to think about your design for inclusion and easy collaboration. This is something that we all sort of haven't had necessarily um, had to spend time on and had to uh, think through about what do we need to do in our offices to make sure that everyone in office and out of office is included in how we work and in our workflow. And how do we make it easy for them to be included, easy to participate? And there are things from a you know, facilities perspective, from an organizational perspective, from a rooms perspective, that all have to be considered as we head back to work to make sure that we're designing for inclusion. We also, part of that designing around inclusion is how do we manage our shared spaces with one another? How do we look at personal spaces now, right? In this transition time, we're going back, safety matters. Um, making sure that when we meet together in office, we're doing so safely in a comfortable environment where everybody feels I'm good here so they can just get down to doing the work that they're there to get done. And the other element I think we're all really aware of, and everybody has been focused here, which is, you know, how do you maximize engagement, inclusion, and productivity for folks working from home? And we've spent a lot of time this past year uh, building products to solve these issues, right? Uh, expanding uh, capabilities and features and functionalities of the Zoom platform to meet this sort of really uh, urgent need that we've had over this past year. But that need's going to continue, but it's going to morph. It's going to be a little different for folks working at home. You know, during the pandemic, we were all working from home, and now that's not going to be the case. Some of us are going to be in the office. So making sure that people who are remote get to really participate and be part of the team is really important too. So with that, I want to sort of hand this off to Mark and Scott, because they're going to walk you through sort of how D10 and Zoom have worked together um, to build the solutions that we believe will help you meet this challenge of building your successful teams in the hybrid work environment. Yeah, thank you, Nia. So the great thing about uh, D10 and Zoom uh, is our optimized relationship. We are true partners in collaboration. Uh, D10 uh, devices exclusively run Zoom Rooms application. So that is uh, very important because it allows us to innovate together uh, on features, both from the software side and from the hardware side. It allows us to uh, co-develop uh, these devices. So it creates that seamless experience that Mark has uh, you know, started to talk about where uh, things just happen seamlessly. They're intuitive. Uh, there's not a, a steep learning curve uh, to jump into Zoom rooms and a D10 device uh, just feels very natural uh, to use these uh, solutions 
uh, and plan them in your uh, technology spec. So uh, the simplicity, the value uh, is, is a great uh, collaboration point between both D10 and Zoom. Yeah, and I'd like to add that since 2017, when the two companies got together to formulate a plan as to how we build these devices, you know, one thing was, was clear. We're a UCAS company here at Zoom, right? We're software first. We, we are not hardware experts. And that's one thing that D10 was. Um, and, and vice versa, D10 is not a, you know, a UCAS company. So we, we decided, hey, if we get the best of both worlds and collaborate with D10 and the world-class device, only one devices, and we're able to get this, the actual Zoom software, if you will, into these hardware devices, then that's really where we can create some magic together. And that's what we've accomplished here. So all of these devices we'll talk about today, um, they all have the actual Zoom software in there, like Scott was saying, and we've collaborated to make sure that we're giving everyone the best, best in class, if you will, devices. In the past, the way it would work is a hardware manufacturer would develop a device to work on a platform, but the collaboration wouldn't really be there. It was all standard base, if you will, interoperability, which was great. However, that didn't allow to do some additional functionality that we could do today, um, like embedding our, our world-class video algorithm and audio algorithm into the actual devices and then creating this whiteboarding capabilities that we have. So we'll, um, we'll go through that today. Very exciting stuff. So now we'd like to uh, kind of present a, a new uh, video that we have for everyone today. It's about the future of work. It's about returning to the office, uh, the solutions that D10 and Zoom uh, have built together uh, to help create stronger teams, uh, increase engagement, uh, and, and you know, feel included when you are in this new hybrid uh, work situation. So we'll, we'll roll the video now. Welcome to the new future. Welcome to the new future with D10 and Zoom, where innovation powers your meeting experience. D10 makes it easy to return to the office with award-winning solutions for every workspace: large conference rooms, huddle spaces, in-office phone booths, and home offices. D10 is the perfect solution for the hybrid work environment with true all-in-one devices. Simplify your meeting spaces and replace the need for external components and messy cables. D10 devices set up in minutes. Just plug it in and it just works. Safely return to the office with D10 and Zoom. Transform existing displays into a touch experience with D10 Go and D10 Mate. Use D10 as your virtual receptionist to greet visitors. Start and manage meetings hands-free from your mobile device or voice commands. Leverage digital signage to share information throughout the office. D10's innovative technology drives powerful collaboration. Experience crystal clear audio and lifelike video. Increase participation and engagement. Easily share content. Illustrate your ideas using whiteboarding. And mark up documents and presentations in real time. Join a Microsoft Teams meeting directly from your D10 device. Upgrade to true all-in-one devices for a modern, simplified meeting experience. D10 and Zoom, innovating the new future together. Yeah, that's a great video because <laughs> um, I think it really does sum up sort of what the solutions we have um, really offer. And I'm excited today because we get to deep dive and dig into some of the things that are referenced in that video um, in a way that really connect those capabilities and those features to solving these problems, to building the bridge um, that uh, folks are really looking to do to make sure that their go back to the office is uh, really great for everyone, for everyone. Cool. Well, yeah, thanks. I really think that's a, a great preamble to what we really want to talk about today, which is the four topics, Nia, that you introduced. Um, and let's jump right into maintaining team culture in the new hybrid office, right? This is really critical to creating that engaged and included atmosphere for everybody who's working at home, like myself. I'm a remote employee, right? And I, it's very unlikely I'm going to be spending a whole lot of time in the office with my colleagues. So for me to feel included, there are a lot of things that I think we can do as a company 
to bring everybody together. And I think a lot of that starts with reimagining these shared and personal workspaces. Right? What is what do those conference rooms now look like? And what do they what do they how should we think about these spaces with people at home and people actually in the office? Um, you know, and that being said too, a lot of us that have been at home for, for nine or twelve months, you know, we've been kind of accustomed to this personal space and this flexibility working at home, working on our own time. Um, that we're going to expect to be able to extend that when we go back into the office as well. Um, and as I mentioned a second ago, team members at home need to feel included with colleagues in the office. And, and that's, you know, myself included. You know, we don't want to feel like we're forgotten, although we are not in the office with everybody else. And I think there's a lot of really easy ways we can do that. That's, that's very, very simple. It's easy to adopt. Um, and it can just become a natural extension of us all working together in these meetings and shared spaces. So when we talk about designing for inclusion and collaboration, you know, there are a lot of things that we just saw in that video, um, particularly virtual whiteboarding um, and annotation, which really help us to and share and illustrate ideas in real time and really capture a lot of the inspiration as it strikes. And we can do this by um, providing mixed use shared spaces uh, with all in one devices equipped, right? And, and so I have a bullet here that's highlighted and this is Simplicity Matters. And, and one of the reasons why I say simplicity matters in this context is these all-in-one devices include powerful microphones, camera equipment, built-in Zoom operating systems that are super easy to use, right? So you think about you're deploying new equipment into a conference room. It needs to be able to one-touch start. The adoption needs to be very easy or else it won't be used. And a lot of the things that we're talking about simply won't be put in motion. And just adding to that really quick, you know, a lot of a lot of the times you think of an all-in-one device and we show you the whiteboarding capabilities and you think of it as a digital whiteboard, it's so much more, right? When I walk into a space and use one of these devices, there's things in there like camera tracking, which I don't have to think about as a user. I can walk around, the actual camera will frame me out as I look into the camera. Um, if I just walk up to the board, touch it, it gives me the control bar that's very similar to what you have on your Zoom client today. So again, very easy to use because we you know, many times we've showed users, especially in the education space, where we just don't give a training. We just say, why don't you go ahead and try and use it? And when we do that, more times than not, it's just a seamless experience because they walk up to it, touch it. They see the controls. How do I whiteboard? Oh, there's a whiteboard button. How do I you know, share uh, my, my PC or my Mac? I can just walk up to it and hit share. So it's just so simple the way it was designed to mirror the functionality of what you have on the Zoom client that users just simply walk up and engage. And then as far as, you know, like Jackson was saying, the microphone's extremely powerful on these devices, which means, again, I don't have to think about yelling into the microphone or yelling at the device. I can walk around a space and just simply chat in my normal um, tone of voice. And those microphones will pick it up from wherever I'm at. I could even have my back turned and they're so powerful that the audio will bounce off the walls and the microphone will pick it up. These are the little things that, that people just don't want to have to worry about. Can you hear me now? Can you see me now? All this stuff, it just works. And that's the cool thing about this is um, it's more than just a, a digital whiteboard, right? It's, it's a true collaboration and communication device. Yeah, and then I think too, um, you know, we're going to jump into a whiteboarding demo here in a second. And one thing that is really important for us at D10 and, and I think at Zoom as well is whiteboarding has become... We use it all the time at D10 when we're when we're concepting ideas, when we're putting together new projects, and it's from the ground up that technology has been designed to share. All right. So initially, before there, everybody was working from home, you know, it was very easy to go into a conference room, do some whiteboarding, annotate on top of a document, and then share it. But now we're really thinking about in greater context all of the other team members who might not be even in the meeting, you might have remote employees who can't attend. Right, they might not be able to actually be on that time zone, for example, it might be the middle of the night for them. And you can share it to their email, or you can share it to chat very easily. I think that that's a very powerful tool when we talk about inclusion and engagement with remote team members. 
Yeah, absolutely. Having the technology that connects people. And we talk about video conferencing. We've been doing that successfully for this year where we can see each other. We can read each other's body language. We can engage and, and kind of, um, you know, get so much more out of the experience because we can see each other and we can inter interact with what we, what we absolutely see. Uh, but the bridges between the old world and the new world uh, really do require interesting, unique, powerful technology to, to make that bridge. Because as Jackson just said, there will be people on your team who may be working in a different country um, and they're not there. It's three in the morning for them. So they're not there when a meeting is happening. How do we include them? How do we allow them to participate without just sort of missing the experience? And this technology gives folks the opportunity to do that because while you're in your video meeting, while you're having that experience, you can record your meeting so that others can watch it later. You can ideate and share ideas and content and all of those things and then share the experience with your team members who aren't there. They get to also participate, understand what happened, uh, listen to a joke that somebody on the team makes and that the rest of the team references forever, right? They're part of that experience. They get that too. Really great point. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about whiteboarding. And um, I recorded a short demo here just to kind of show some of the cool things you can do with whiteboarding. and. You know, as we were talking about a second ago, whiteboarding, if you think about why do we whiteboard in the traditional office space, right? Why, why a bunch of us get together and all draw on the same, the same plane and share a, a single workspace with each other. And it's so that we can capture those ideas, the ideation, that inspiration, right as it strikes. We can put it down on the board. We can talk about it in real time. And you can do that. You don't have to be in the room to engage with these um, with, with these brainstorming sessions. And so, you know, I thought a, a nice thought experiment that we could do is address something that we probably haven't thought about a whole lot in the last year, which is now that we're all going back into the office, what's the lunch policy going to look like? Right, so what's, what's an acceptable thing, you know, to bring to lunch when you have your lunch periods? And a lot of us are thinking about different flex periods for lunch, a lot of us are talking about um, having staggered times that we all spend in the break room so that we're not all in the same place at the same time. So everybody's favorite period of the day, lunch. I'm gonna use the, the auto shapes tool to draw these perfect circles that we're gonna use to have a couple of different categories of lunch items. So, um, you know, I think just in granted terms, there's things that are okay to bring to lunch and not okay to bring to lunch. And I know it's kind of a touchy subject, but something to consider, you know, there's some, <laughs> some not okay things to bring to lunch. So, so Mark, what, what do you like to bring to lunch? I love bringing sandwiches. I'm a sandwich guy. Right on, Scott. That's me right there with the salad. Yep. Yeah, you know, I think you do some leftovers as well. You know, you got some takeout. Great, bring, bring it to work. What is the one thing that's not okay to bring to, to to lunch at work. Fish. Fish for sure. <laughs> Warming up that fish. Yeah, no way. So many microwaves <laughs> fish, you gotta clear out the building for like an hour. So if we were to build a policy around, you know, when you're packing your lunch in the morning, if we're gonna write our new lunch lunchtime policy, you know, one thing that we should maybe throw as a line item is please don't bring seafood, you know, to work. Um, if at all possible. So I'm gonna to switch to night mode here now. And in night mode is a really nice accessibility feature for folks that either are sensitive to bright white screens, um, might be working in a darker environment or simply want a different workspace to work on um, that's not as high contrast as the stark white background. So another policy in our back to work um, lunch uh, policy that we should think about is, is uh, in the fridge and the Tupperware that goes into it. So, you know, some things that we should think about in, in our new policy are, well, how long can food that goes into your Tupperware, how long can it go in the fridge? And of course, everybody should write their name and date on it so we know when and whose it is. And if you've got food in there, 
right? It needs to come out. So otherwise you're going to have these creepy Tupperware things sitting in the fridge forever. So let's say it's a three day policy. Right? Because otherwise after then three business days, things start to get a little bit weird. And then nobody's going to claim that Tupperware before long. And one of us is going to have to throw it away. And uh, nobody wants to Rochambeau for that one. So I'm using a couple of different tools here in these demonstrations. Um, one is the freehand brush tool and I'm drawing very broad with it. I'm using a very thick brush, but there are like five or six different sizes that you can use with digital whiteboarding. Um, and I'm using the, the, the fatter brush just because that way everybody can see it very easily. But if you're working on a larger 55 inch, 75 inch screen, you know, you're gonna want to use a larger brush and a smaller brush to get in there and, and really explore all those ideas. And again, you know, as I mentioned too, on the right hand side here, you're seeing easy sharing functions. So those tools are going to be persistent on the, the whiteboard wherever you go. So you can share it to chat, you can share it to personal emails. Uh, it's very easy to share these ideas as they happen. So um, Mark, with whiteboarding, you know, I know there's some really cool stuff that you guys are working on in your teams. Do you, do yeah. you want to go through some of those? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, one of the things is we do have the whiteboarder that exists today is, is you just saw the tools that Jackson was using and it works great. But I think during the past 12 months, we've really been challenged, right? Especially in K through 12 and higher ed, where they said, you know, are telling us we need better tools in the whiteboarding and, and not just more colors and more, you know, thicker lines and, and more different types of pins and whatnot. But we're talking now about how do I make a living, if you will, whiteboard. What does that mean? Today, I can whiteboard like Jackson was doing. I can save it and then email it out. Um, you know, That's great. It at least saves us from having to go and take a snapshot with our camera and then emailing it out that way. It's part of the work stream, but I think we could take it a step further. So we're doing things like living whiteboard, which we'll have later, um, late summer to, to early fall. And what that means is that if I'm in a, a room and I'm doing a whiteboard, and let's just say the top of the hour comes, we're not done with our session. We need to continue to work. So what, you know, but ultimately I'm gonna get kicked out of that space or that room. And what happens now is that living whiteboard will get saved into a chat session within my Zoom client. I can simply walk to the next room. If it's available, I can go ahead and go into that space, open up my chat session, it'll pair to the room and boom, it pops up the living whiteboard and we can continue to annotate. All during this time, if anybody was at home and they're continuing to whiteboard, they're going to get all of that. And I'm going to simply pop it right back up onto the to one of these devices, all in one D10s, and it's going to be there and we continue to collaborate. So that's the essence of hybrid, if you will, workforce and continuing to collaborate as we're going through. And that's not just whiteboard. That could be an actual image, right? Actually annotate on top of the image. And that's really cool too. Um, infinite canvas as well, right? We know that if you have one of these devices, which are 50 inches, 55 inches or, or 75 inches, that sometimes might not be enough real estate. So that just simply means that we can pinch and zoom and move over and create more space as well. So another thing that we're working on to bring to the whiteboarding functionality. So that's really cool. Another one that we have is uh, moving on is the sticky notes, right? This is very, very cool for storyboarding, right? This is um, companies that do a lot of, you know, maybe like movie studios or you know, just companies are building new products and they want to storyboard it out. Um, very common that they use sticky notes. And by the time they're done, the entire wall's um, stuck with a bunch of sticky notes. And now that space is forever used for that story. Now, why not have that in a digital environment? And that's what we could do with the sticky notes here is, is we could build out our storyboard, if you will. Um, and this, again, is something we're working on to bring um, to, the, to the market as well, which we should have when we introduce the, uh, the other um, ones that we mentioned. So sticky notes, stay tuned for that one. And then, you know, last but not least, we have also the ability to do things like work stream templates. What does that mean? That means that maybe like I want to have a block diagram that's already built and then I'm able to just manipulate and move around. It gives me a, a template, if you will, to begin so I don't have to do it from scratch. Um, very useful, right, for when I'm just doing a bunch of different types of, of work streams here. So these are the types of things that, that we're working on right now that we want to bring to market and uh, we're hoping to have them by next fall. And again, we're doubling down on whiteboarding as you can see here. And again, this is working with P10 as well. So we're going to be able to use those types of all-in-one devices to bring these new work streams to, uh, to the environment. So, so exciting stuff to come more on, on the whiteboarding. And it already does so much today, but I think we could, we could take it a step further.
Yeah, as a total whiteboard nerd, I'm super excited about Infinite Canvas and Sticky Notes. I, mean, I think those two things <clears throat> are going to be a huge deal, you know, for me in my own workflow. Absolutely. So I think another thing too that we kind of gloss over at D10 because we use it all the time is how powerful annotation tools can be. So, um, you know, annotation, obviously we can annotate on documents and spreadsheets. Um, you know, I think a lot of people don't realize though is that you can annotate directly onto slide presentations like we're running right now. Um, and multimedia content like video that we just watched a second ago, you can annotate directly on top of it. And, and beyond just drawing, you know, lines and, and, you know, calling arrows out to things. There are a lot of really interesting tools that you can use that I think a lot of us aren't aware of. So drawing stamps, um, spotlight tools, and, and they're also text tools as well. So, you know, I threw a football pitch here at the top right. You know, if you were to annotate on top of this, this pitch, lay out a play, you know, I think is a very classic example of how annotation is used in, in professional sporting events and entertainment. You know, it feels like a little pick and roll there. You know, and also too, from our whiteboard demo we watched a minute ago, we put together some policies in motion that we explored some ideas about the new lunch policy. Um, and so as food containers and shared refrigerator in consideration of others, this is just a sample memo, but there are some typos in there. So Nia, if you were drafting, or if, if one of your team members was drafting this memo and you were to proof it, you know, would you highlight any of those typos or some of those funny syntax things that are happening in there? You know, how would you, how would you possibly proof a memo like this in real time? It's really helpful to be able to do things like this, to call something out, to say, you know, look here, this isn't spelled right. What about this punctuation or whatever the case may be? And it really um, allows us to interact with one another as we point things out to one another. One of the things I think everybody gets really frustrated with is somebody is sharing a piece of content and we all do this, ready? No, no, move your cursor. No, it's up and to the right. No, it's right under that icon. No, no, click right. That frustrating experience uh, is something we're all used to. But with the ability to annotate, we can simply say, um, you know, we can simply say, uh, you know, Jackson, I'm changing colors. Jackson, move here. I want to see what's happening here. And he can be immediately directed to that spot. And it really means that the flow of our work is just so much easier, right? We, we are not wasting that time uh, about move over here. No, it's down to the left uh, and those sorts of things. So annotating content um, can be not just corrective in this isn't done, you know, fix this, fix that, but it can also be sort of part of the management process of the meeting itself. It helps you navigate the content that you're sharing with one another. It gives you the opportunity to also kind of engage and interact because if Jackson and I are kind of going back and forth on something, um, you know, he can add a note right there get from the conversation that we're having. Um, we are able to take this document, you know, mark it up all over the place um, and keep it in terms of the process as part of our culture. So one of the things that we do here at D10 is we use stars when we are annotating. So when we really like something that somebody is sharing, we just pop up a star. It's just our way of saying, love that right, without interrupting the presentation, for example. Um, we're, uh, we're able to just kind of hone in on something in the presentation that we think is really cool or that we really like, and we just pop up a star. That's part of our culture. Um, but there are so many tools here that allow you to create the kind of culture that's gonna work best for you and work best for your team. Yeah, and that's, you know, I really like that you touched on the fact that it adds to culture and it, it's engaging for all of us at home. and. One thing too that before we jump off of annotation that I think is really important to point out is the fact that you can save an annotated document. So it doesn't just happen in the meeting. It's not just in this one session. I can save this exact picture marked up as we've done and save it as a PNG and, and send it out to anybody who needs to be in the loop. Um, and it's also very easy to clear all drawings directly from the meeting too. So I know that we all do annotation. I know it's like, yeah, duh, we do that. 
there are a lot of really interesting tools there that I, I really implore you to go in there and explore. The spotlight function is very, very useful and, and check it out. And of course, you know, the whole reason why we're talking about this right now is that you can do these all on D10 devices in your shared spaces. So with that, let's talk about some of these shared spaces. So um, group meetings in the office, right? Here on the picture on the right, we've got a, a D10 dual D7. And that's a 55 inch. There's two of the screens that are linked together. Um, you know, what's really great about having one of these in your huddle space is that it allows presenters to engage with one of the screens and the other screen can be dedicated to just all of the participants of the meeting. So let's say that you've got your hybrid workspace. You might have five or six folks in the office that are in this meeting. And then you might have 10 team members that are all phoning in from different parts of the country or the world really. Um, and they can populate one side of the screen. They can see the shared screen. If anybody's annotating directly onto the screen, it's very easy to do. And particularly if you use a personal stylus, you can keep the hands out of the equation. So you can use a very easy hands-free solution using a personal stylus um, to engage and draw directly onto those screens. And as we've been talking about, you know, when you use um, Zoom rooms on a, on a D10 device, remote team members can interact with the shared content directly from home. Like we're all doing right now in this, in this meeting. The other thing too that I want to talk about, which I think is a, a pretty um, interesting uh, deployment of D10 devices is in what we're, we're calling these in-office phone booths and these meeting booths. Um, you can take a 27-inch D10 me, put it into a small little meeting booth, and it's like you almost have a phone booth, but it's built with camera, microphone, speakers, and the digital whiteboard. So you can have that fully collaborative experience in your own personal space. On the right, you see a little bit larger version of that, and that's a little meeting booth, also equipped with the D10 D, or D10 Me, rather. And you could have a few folks from the um, office go into a small room and then meet with team members that are remote. And this can be a really nice way to have kind of more of a private conversation, or or just more of a um, you know need to know kind of a conversation with remote employees. So let me it's also, that. I think, good to, oh, sorry, Mark, you go. Oh, I was just going to say, I just want to add there that in the past, you know, we used to hear a lot about hoteling and hot desking and, and it, was, it was used, right? It was more used for a telephone. You walk into the office and you punch in your PIN code and, and you log in and that phone becomes yours and it's your phone number. Um, that was cool. But I think this is even way cooler. Like I walk into the space, I pair up to the device, it now becomes mine. It has my calendar seamlessly works with my Zoom client on my laptop. I work the same exact way, but now I have this extra monitor to the side. So you're, it's your own custom setup for the day. And when you walk away, you automatically are just gonna unpair to that device and it becomes someone else's when they walk up to it. This, this is very cool because these are the types of things that make it exciting for employees to go back to the office and say, wow, I really love working in that phone booth where for me, I might say, you know what, too small of a space. I wanna go work over in that little desk over there, which I, which I feel is, you know, the table is a little more my style. So um, these are the things, again, that we've been working on to make it a seamless environment, seamless workflow, if you will, um, for employees who want to go back to the office. And for the ones that are going to be at home, again, they want, you, you need to democratize that, that experience from home user to the office user. So if I'm in the office and I'm meeting with two people that are at home, now it's just expected that they want to see me. In the past, it was just phone calls, right, and just an audio bridge. Now we've moved on to a hybrid workforce and a whole new way of working. And that's what this these devices allow us to do throughout the organization. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, absolutely. You know, uh, now you go, Scott. <laughs> I just want to, you know, reemphasize the fact that we are creating that consistent experience too, right? With the 10 devices, with Zoom rooms, uh, you can enter any size space from your home office to one of these uh, personal spaces all the way up to a conference room. Uh, and it's intuitive because you are in that environment that you're extremely familiar with, uh, allowing you know, to annotate. Uh, consistent quality is important as well, right? You're only as strong as your weakest link. So having uh, D10 devices deployed in multiple solutions gives you that equal uh, video quality, the, the audio quality, the, the zero touch latency, all of those uh, you know, really important uh, features uh, are, are kind of baked into any size space that you might want to uh, try and use and execute in. 
Yeah, I think All right, got, so uh, unless Jackson oh, sorry, has something to say. Not <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right, I was going to say, unless Jackson has something to say. My only additional comment was that, you know, at D10, we have built solutions for every workspace. So whether it's on the desktop, we've got the ideal desktop set up for you. Whether it's these meeting booths or bigger conference rooms, you can even put a D10 device on a cart and make it a mobile uh, device that you can use in open spaces and those sorts of things because, you know, it's one power cable. It connects wirelessly as well as over Ethernet. It makes it mobile. Um, and, and, and the value of that is it gives you the flexibility to deploy D10 and Zoom everywhere and to deploy them however right, is going to meet the needs of your office space or meet the needs of your teams. So, Jackson, back to you. <laughs> yeah, thanks. No, that's great. All right, you know, I, just another point I think is worth touching on here because we're getting some questions in Q&A about it as well. Is, is talking about stylus use and, and hands-free. And D10 makes the stylus, but all of our devices can be used with, with any, you know, standard stylus that's designed for touchscreens. So, you know, I, you mentioned a minute ago, or you may have noticed I mentioned that uh, personal stylus, right? Going into the office, I bring my own stylus with me. That, that I always know it's my own stylus. And I'm keeping my fingerprints off the screen. I think that's a really great way to, to keep the hands out of the equation. Um, and, and Mark too, you mentioned the phone app pairing and I, I didn't really mention that enough when we got into the slide, but the fact that you can walk into one of these booths and it will sync with your phone and, and you're able to pull up your contacts, um, directly from your phone. So it becomes your personal meeting space. I think is really, really important here. It's key to this whole deployment. So with that too, I you know I think the other piece of the equation here is maximizing inclusion and productivity at home, right? As I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, I'm a remote employee. Um, you know, D10 is based in San Jose. I'm based in Los Angeles. If unless something changes, I'm going to stay in Los Angeles, even though many of my colleagues will be returning to the office. And so for me, at home in my own personal workspace, I have a D10 Me 27 inch, which I used for the whiteboarding demo we saw a minute ago. And that allows me to stay productive and collaborate with my colleagues that are in the office or also who might be at home as well. Um, and because I'm at home, I'm gonna be working on a different kind of a time frame, right? I'm gonna be going, getting to my desk at a different time. I'm gonna be walking away from my desk at a different time. You know, I think probably all of us can agree that are in this webinar that have been working remotely that some of the work-life balance lines have blurred a little bit in the past year. And so getting back into these more structured work times and being cognizant of my colleagues that might want to leave a little bit earlier to beat traffic. Some of these other considerations that I haven't really had to think about a whole lot in the last year. I think really talking about that with colleagues and putting together just some guidelines will really help to maintain that inclusive uh, environment for everybody. And another thing too is I have a bullet here is setting video on and video off meetings, right? Um, I think that's something that there's been a lot of discussion over the last year or so is that having constant video meetings can sometimes be draining. So if you have specific meetings where everybody's video on, some meetings specifically video off, I think it's just kind of gives everybody a nice break um, and is a nice way to just kind of keep the flow of conversation going. And I think this is, you know, an important part of the inclusion aspect is, you know, D10 and Zoom rooms being able to democratize this technology that has existed in an expensive conference room. And now you can have those same features for less than the price of a tablet in your home, on your desk. And it really creates that seamless experience uh, for a hybrid worker uh, being able to experience right the the same features the same benefits the same quality regardless if they're in the office that day or if they're working from home and so to wrap up the webinar um you know nia you outlined some some pretty core concepts at the beginning of, of our discussion today so maybe we should just recap on, on some of those. So the future of team collaboration in the hybrid office, right? You wanna consider maintaining that, key, that team culture, right? Even taking it from home or revisiting what the team culture was before we all left the office. Designing for inclusion and collaboration we've been talking about a lot in the last half an hour or so. Supporting safe, um, 
safe spaces for group meetings in the office, right? There are a lot of things that we can do to minimize person-to-person -person contact, to um, improve space between our desks, and maximize inclusion with, with folks that are going to be uh, remaining at home, or that might be at home certain days and others in the office other days as well. And so, you know, the common string throughout all of these topics, all of these points is, is culture, it's about inclusivity, and it's about, um, you know, being a part of the conversation is the main takeaway, I think, from today's discussion. So, so with that, you know, um, if you're intrigued by what you saw today, if you want to know more, and if we didn't answer any of the questions that you have, and we'll get into Q&A in just a second with, with some of the time that we have left, but I really want to invite you to sign up for a free one-on-one -on -one consultation with us. And so there's that QR code there. If you scan that on your mobile device or just visit us at d10.com, you can sign up for a one-on-one -on -one, um, consultation with one of our D10 Zoom product experts. And we can talk about device management. We can talk about personalized solution design. And we can give you an in-depth look at some of the latest uh, Zoom Room and D10 features that we jumped through today and that we've covered in some of our previous webinars. So, so I really invite you to take advantage of that. Um, you know, promise it's not a sales pitch. We just want to make sure that you are able to get the most out of your spaces and your uh, considerations of returning to the office. So with that, um, let's go ahead and jump into some of the Q&A that maybe we haven't been able to get to while we've been um, talking. So Scott or Mark, are there any particular Q&A questions that you think we should leave with? So there was, a, do we sell um, devices, D10 sell devices in LATCAM? Uh, Scott, I think we'll let you take that one. Yep, absolutely. So uh, we, we're available in over 40 countries globally. Uh, we do have uh, distributors in Latin America. So this is a great time to scan that QR code and we'll put you in touch with uh, a local representative. Also, Candace Price had the question, can I update a Zoom Room client on these? Is it um, the hardware itself? Is it basically a computer and does it update, auto update itself? Um, so yeah, using our Zoom device management, you can update these devices. Um, so it's all done via the Zoom uh, portal, if you will, and in their um, auto updates. Yeah, so here's a good question. Um, and I think this is worthy of sort of a larger discussion here is, I have five existing Zoom rooms. Can I add powerful mics and tracking, et cetera, you talked about, or does all my technology need to be replaced? You know, I think that that's a good question. It doesn't really have a simple answer. And I think that what we should talk about is what's really the core benefits of having true all-in-one devices, right? And, and I think it's it's about simplicity, it's about ease of use. And it's a, and a, lot, of thing, a lot of times we talk about what we describe as multiple fail points in, in any system design. So if you go into a conference room and it has a separate camera, has a separate microphone system, you know, there might be a beam forming system in, in the drop tiles. You've got a, a monitor, maybe a digital whiteboard of some kind, and those are all separate items. You're buying those from separate vendors. Um, it creates a very complicated system that has what we call multiple fail points because if any one of those systems goes down, you're going to need to find out who that vendor is. You're going to need to find your warranty for that specific part. It's a lot of extra footwork. Um, you know, going into it, you may have thought that there was a cost savings there or gave you a little bit more flexibility. But what we're finding at D10 is with a true all-in-one device, you simply plug it in within minutes, you can you can be set up in a room with all of those pieces included. Um, and we have some some functions built into our devices that will do, you know, auto device management and auto device repair as well. You have a lot of ways to update the firmware in the back end. You can do it automatically in the middle of the night when nobody's using it. You can set up sleep times. And because all those different systems are all integrated with each other, they all talk to each other, it's very, very easy to manage. And your employees will be able to go into that room and with a single touch, start the Zoom meeting, share content, whiteboard, and have a really great collaborative session right off the bat. The question was asked, let's say I have a low speaking presenter in front of the D10. Can they use a wireless headset with it? I can't reiterate enough how many times myself and the D10 team have been in front of customers that say, I don't know if they can hear me in their end. We do a simple demonstration where we have instructors or users just walk around the space and talk in a normal set of tones and the microphone is very, very powerful. So 
Can you use a lapel mic or something like that? You could design a room to do that. However, I would say first check out the beam forming microphone. It is an array of microphones up there, right? Oh, it, Scott, how many how many microphones are, are in the top of a, a D, D7? Yep. Uh, up to 16. Up to 16, yep. so 16 microphones in there. And there's a lot of magic happening via software to make sure these microphones are picking up all kinds of different yep. things in space, so. And like you mentioned, the powerful Zoom algorithms for audio, right? So we are optimized uh, for the back-end audio mixing of Zoom. It really optimizes that, and uh, both the camera and the audio can uh, keep you in focus, follow you around the room, and, and have a fantastic experience. Yeah, we've got some other questions coming in that are a little bit more technical um, about CPU, about um, microphone specs and camera specs. You know, I, those kinds of questions I would really recommend, you know, punching that um, QR code and, and reaching out to us so that we can, we can address it a little bit more specifically. And the reason I say that is we have a, a portfolio of devices and they all have different specs. And so it really warrants a conversation about what are the requirements that you're looking for? What are your needs? So we can help you to find the solution that really works best for you. Um, and we're getting close to time here. So, you know, again, I, just, I really want to thank everybody who joined us today. Um, really, really appreciate you being a part of our conversation and really appreciate all the engagement in the Q&A. A lot of the questions we didn't get to, we'll, we'll follow up with you directly um, if we have your email on file. And if not, um, again, feel free to reach out to us. You can go to d10.com. You can use the QR code, as I mentioned. Um, there are a lot of ways to get in touch with us. And so um, Scott's using our cool annotation tools here. Thanks a lot for joining us. Um, really appreciate your time and, and have a really great day. Thanks everyone. Thanks everybody.